Good morning, good evening, and、uh, good afternoon, guys.、Uh, welcome to the Godox Facebook Live Talk. Today we have your favorite photographer, favorite portrait photographer, Sarah.、Uh, she、um, she recently did an amazing job、um, with his commercial shots. So here she's going to share some of her behind the scene as well as finished photos with us.、Uh, without any further ado, I will let her take over the talk. Hi everybody! Hi Aries! Thank you so much for having me back. This is great.、Um, I just wanted to talk today about how oh, I've used Godox for many years now, and people are always surprised when、uh, when I when I say that I've you know I've used my little Godox, my small Godox flashes, and now more recently the AD three hundred, which I love、mm. to shoot commercial. Photography.、Uh, I love it so much because I'm often asked to go to the client's premises. They want me to shoot there, so I just I have a tiny car. <laughs> in, Europe, in, in, in Europe, we like small cars. I have a little Igo Toyota, Toyota Igo, and it's tiny, so I, I'm able to fit everything in there, and I just take my lighting to the client premises, and we set up there. Um, hi, Peter. Hi, everybody.、Yeah. Hi, hi, Nagayuki. Hi. <laughs> so hi, nice. Hi, Kojima. Hi. Yeah, we miss you, buddy. Yeah. So yes, I just wanted to show just a standard, a few standard jobs that that I've that I've done、mm. shooting commercial style, which is still. Portrait based because the people who contact me for commercial work tend to have seen my portrait work, and they very often say, "We love that. That's what we want for our for our advertising. We don't want a typical、um, advertising shot. We want your look for our for our campaign, which is just music to my ears. That's just wonderful."、Mm. So yeah, I thought I I just gathered together a collection of images, and also recently I did. A job where I had five models. I think each had three different looks and setups, and I had to get it all done in one day. And I work alone; I don't have assistants or anything. So I I, I packed my car with with my Godox lights and went to the client premises. And、uh, I, 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 we 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 did a behind the scenes video.、Um, so I just wanted to show you a little bit of that. Out of curiosity, did you use AD two hundred this time or AD three hundred? I used both. I used. I took the AD three hundred, and I had a couple of AD two hundreds as well, which I just in case I needed a little bit more variety, and I did. I did end up using them all,、um, and、um, yeah. But the the AD three hundred was just was just lovely. It just gave me that little extra bit of power. That I needed if I wanted to just increase my、um, increase my f stop, you know, narrow down the aperture a little bit, and it gave gave me a little bit little bit more power and control.、Um, but it's still really small and neat and、uh, works works beautifully. Quite good. Should we jump into the、um, your lecture slides? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So、um, I've I've got a, a variety of pictures. First, I just wanted to show that I've done. Now, the, the early ones were done with the AD two hundreds because for a few years that's all I've shot with in my studio and weddings. I just literally just take them take them with me when I go to a wedding and then just bring them back to the studio. So this was a hairdresser client who wanted asked me for a portrait style. Image to go on a billboard, and they wanted something that was painterly and classic. So here I have、um, two lights. I have、um, an overhead light. You can just see it slightly to the rear, providing a little bit of light on her forehead and nose,、uh, because I wanted to bring out the the hair a little bit more. But they didn't want a, a sort of a, the, the typical hairdresser shot. They wanted something very portrait portrait like. So this is what I presented them with, and then this was what ended up going on the billboard.、Um, I cleaned it up a little bit. I put the, the 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 painterly effect on the on the test, 
and they decided to crop in and we used the space on the right for their logo that went on. And this was a six meter billboard. Um, and they also had it in their, in their salon. Um, and uh, the next one we did from the same shot, um, always with a, an AD200. This you can see from the catch lights. It's just a, an AD200 in a uh, in a soft box, and I've got a I've got a, a small silver reflector just to give a little bit of glow. And just in case anybody points out the messy hair, that was the the client, the hairdresser client, deliberately wanted that. They wanted to show something that looked. Um, mm. In fact, I wanted to, to to retouch out all of these little stray hairs, and they said, no, 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 it's perfect as it is. Leave it. We want a real. We want it to look like a real woman and, and just, you know, just a, a, a real hairstyle. So someone who's just literally just gone like that and they wanted it to look genuine. They didn't want that perfect kind of retouched look. So this also just, went to a six meter billboard. Yeah, just to support what you said earlier, mm -hmm. you know, with this image, the last time we had a chat with it, Mm -hmm. That inspired me so much. I did the photo shoots of uh, pre wedding photo shoots on 1st of October. Mm -hmm. So um, I used to delete this kind of photo. This time yeah. I keep it. You know yeah. what? Turns out the bride loves it. Yeah. And she right. actually put that right into her album. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. So so good. Good. Yeah, that's so good. So um, it's almost like, you know, feminine way of seeing things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so good well sometimes a little that the, the flaws make make the picture so you know i was like please can i just retouch out those hairs and they were like no 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 <laughs> yeah. um, so let me just i'm just looking at the questions to see yeah let's maybe let's address some questions i think there is a question but it's really vogue question. I'm not quite following this. So tell me about advertising shots and the posts work. Oh, do, do you mean the post production, the the retouching, maybe? Or oh, and so it's the shot and the post work. I'm not too sure. Um, maybe somebody has said. Um, I have the AD200 Pro. How much light speed may select? Okay, that depends entirely on your camera settings and the effect that you want to have. Are you going to be just using a little tiny pop of light to blend with the ambient light? Do you want to knock out all of the ambient light and just use solely the light from the flash? So there's, you can't say that with this light, there's one setting. So mm. sorry about that. You need to experiment and, and uh, learn. Let's say how. under this particular context, did mm -hmm. you use high speed sync? Yes, I think I've got the, in fact, on the next one, I looked up yep. the, the settings. So this is another shot for the client. This is straight out of Lightroom. So there's no retouching on this at all. Um, mm. This is an AD200, 120 centimeter softbox, F4, 250th. So I'm not using high speed sync on that one. Mm. But I will show you later on. There's some pictures where I very, very clearly use high speed sync in order to shoot at F2. And... Mm. It's a gorgeous image. How many lights did you use in this one? This is just one light. So this one and gorgeous. this one uh, is, just, is just an AD200. Yeah. Mm. So good. Um, um, I know this is probably off the topic, but mm -hmm. um, which softbox is is best for wedding assignment? Again, I would say the smallest one, <laughs> the smallest one that you can carry with you, because otherwise it gets really um, it gets really complicated. Mm. Um, it really depends on on what it is you're going to be doing. Um, so for weddings, I'll sometimes not use softbox. So a softbox at all. Um, sometimes I will have one in the car with me for the bridal portraits outside because I want to mm -hmm. balance with the sun and I'll have the, the setting sun or the sun or the, or some kind of backlight on the couple and then I'll have a softbox in front mm -hmm. and I want to get that sort of spread. 
and I don't want it to be too hard on them. I don't want to, I don't want it to, I don't want it to look like a, a hard flash on them. So um, I'll sometimes take it, take it with me. And it depends if I have an assistant as well. So if I, if I have an assistant, then there's going to be light stands, soft boxes. Uh, but I've used, I've always used up until now, I've always used 120 centimeter one, but I really like the 85. I've, um, the 85 is, 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 it's neat. It's still big enough to get the softness that I want. If I want it really soft, I just bring the light closer to the subject. It's as simple as that. And um, yeah, so I, I really like the, the 85. It's a nice, it's a nice sort of mid, mid ground between a more of a beauty dish style and, and a bigger soft box. Another question, which software are you using for retouch? I process the raw in Lightroom or camera raw if it's a if it's a big job I will load everything into Lightroom and I will do a color correction and do some basic adjustments in Lightroom if it's just one or two shots if I'm retouching to somebody else and they've sent me three shots then I will open in camera raw just because it's simpler than creating a catalog and then I retouch in Photoshop but I don't use any software like filters or portraiture or anything like that organic yeah I, I I'm I sort of do everything man manually <laughs> pixel by pixel mm -hmm. uh, another question this is a good one do you use high-speed sync outside or stay within outside. sync um, I usually I'm a big fan of high-speed sync just because it frees me I don't have to think anymore about yeah. staying within the you know the 250th and that kind of annoying thing so I just I just leave high speed sync on and then I shoot at whatever I want to, want to shoot at. Um, and I usually, it, it, I, I wouldn't say that I always like the bokeh look in the background and that I do sometimes, but not always, because sometimes I want to be able to see the, the amazing landscape behind, in which case I'm going to be shooting at, at, at least F8. Um, but otherwise I'd love high speed sync just because I just, I can just forget about it. I just don't, don't have to worry about, um, Stay, you know, keeping having to shoot at at um, at a higher, or using a, a a neutral density filter in order to get mm. that, in, in order to be able to shoot at f two point eight, which I used to do, and that was what I used to do before high speed sync, because that I had, I'd have this sort of dark. It's just filter so much it. pain. It's just such a hassle. Um, I can't yeah, see anything like, through the lens, you know, yeah. through the lens, and and so yeah, it, it's just it opened up a whole new world using high speed sync. So I wouldn't sometimes say something like the three stops, and you sometimes you need the six stop, and every different lens has different diameters. It's yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's yeah. not like I say right for this I use high speed sync, and for this I don't. It's not I just have high speed sync on all the time, and then I just shoot at the settings that I want to shoot at. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Um. Great. So um, another example using um, using eighty two hundreds again is simply uh, um, what I've done here is that I've just to get this pure white background. Um, oh, there was a question there. Is this model far away from the background? Is, can we go back to here? Um, is this model far away from the backdrop? Um, she's not, she's probably about two, hang on a sec, I'm not very good at measuring distances. She's probably about two and a half, three feet away from the backdrop. But what I do to darken the background is that I bring the light forward and I feather it across the, across the model or down across the model so that it doesn't hit the backdrop if I want to darken it. So I can, you know, it, it's not just a question of how far the, the, um, the model is from the backdrop, but it's also what you do with the light just by turning it and feathering it so that it skims the, the model's face and it doesn't hit the backdrop. You can, you can darken the backdrop quite a lot. Um, in this shot, the, the, the client, so this is, let me explain what I'm selling. I'm selling an eyebrow product here. So Sorry, it's, uh, sorry, Sarah, just yeah. give me one sec. My son is uh, <laughs> jumped right into the way. Children are welcome. I'm sorry my daughter isn't here, then we can have a, 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 a parents working from home party. Here's a Theodore. Say hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hey, hello, Sarah. Hello. Hello, Sarah. Hi. I want, 
want to go to Italy to visit you. You want to make time, my darling. you. So good yeah. night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good boy. Papa, go to work. Good night, sweetheart. Oh, cuteness overload. I'm dying. <laughs> yes. Nice, you all. Sorry. Um, no, sorry. 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 sorry about that. Felicia's so um, Felicia's taking shower for uh, for our younger one, so um, he's sort of playing the guitar. He's getting bored, so he's oh, just kind of. Oh, I just want him to see that how that is working from home. You know, I'm not hiding the in the yeah in the corner. What a sweetheart! Yeah, hopefully next time I can bring him to the WPP and visit you guys. Yes! Oh my god, that would be amazing. That'd be so much fun! Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry, so sorry about that. Um, let's continue. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is just a you know a really like classic beauty shot uh, mm -hmm. where you want lots of light and what I'm what we're selling here is is an eyebrow product. Um, mm -hmm. So the it, it's a product that basically um, fixes eyebrows in place and then sort of perfects the eyebrows. So that's what we're mm -hmm. selling here and. Here behind, I've just put her in front of the softbox. So um, it, that's just a, a really easy way to get that pure white background. And I wanted to have that the, the glow sort of coming forward. Um, and that's just a really simple way of doing it. Another way of doing it is, is having a white back backdrop and then having your lights pointing at the backdrop. Um, you need more power for that. So because I just had the 8200s, simple, all you do is you just, I just put it in front of the, the backdrop and then I just extended it. So probably you could see in the original picture, you could see the edge of the, of the softbox and I just extended it in Photoshop and made the, the white background uh, longer. Um, but yeah, I've just got a, I think I had a beauty dish on this one and a reflector, just trying to get that glowy or white or white look. Um, Questions. Here's a um, question. Can we use cheap umbrella modifier to cheese the style of these photos? Maybe tips for the mandatory modifier. So, for many years, I've used um, inexpensive modifiers from Amazon, various brands. So, really, in a modifier, what you're looking for is the shape and the diffusion. Um, how many layers of diffusion? So sometimes within a soft box, there will be um, there will be space to put an extra layer of diffusion. Um, all of that is is dependent on the look that you're going for. Um, I now use the Godox soft boxes because they just um, I find that they they work brilliantly. I love the way that they open and close. They they're very convenient and and very neat. But for a long time in my studio, I can't even remember the brand, but it was an inexpensive, um, I think a 35 euro modifier from, from Amazon that worked absolutely fine. The thing, to, the, the, the thing that you need to understand is how light works, how diffusion works and controlling the light. It, um, that's, that's, the, um, that's the most important thing. The size, um, the things that are important are the size, the shape, not so much. I like tend to like the Octobox because I like the round catch light in the eye. I prefer it. Um, strip boxes, if you want to light down the whole body, grids to control the light. Um, for me now, what is important in a, in a soft box is the ease of opening and closing to be able to pack up and go to a client shoot like this or go to a wedding. Yeah. Um, and that's why I absolutely love the um, the Godox umbrellas because they're just they're very solid but very very fast and easy to just you just push it down literally like an umbrella click and it's there it's open um, silver a beauty dish a silver beauty dish if you want very specular highlights so if you want to get these sort of nice uh, highlights along the face you're going to be looking at a silver 
beauty dish which is deliberately like that or if you want a very very soft fine art look you're going to be looking at a larger modifier with several layers of diffusion and possibly a lot of feathering so that the light is very very soft um, I had I usually take photographs Oh, Mark Skinner, how long have you been a photographer and how long have you been using the Godox range? I've been a photographer for nearly 10 years and I've been using Godox, oh, um, I think at least five years. Um, Dang Tran, I usually take photos with softbox and find having light spots on the cheek or forehead. I notice you don't have that on your shot. How did you avoid this? Well, part of it is retouching. So... However, that's the last step. I should have mentioned that last. Um, makeup is a very important point of it. Now, I like specular highlights. I like to have a little bit of sheen on the on on the nose. You can see on this image, you can see a little bit of sheen. Um, if you want a very very matte look, then makeup is incredibly important and then the softness of the light and not having the hot spot of the light pointing directly onto the model so that's when feathering comes in when you take the soft box if this is the if my hand is the soft box you're going to turn it so that it it crosses the model or is pointing down and is coming down across the, the the model and that way you've got this very very soft light that doesn't pick out these hot spots but very often it's simply shiny shiny skin that can be dealt with with powder um, and then if there is something that's um, that's not what you want in the final image, you can then fit, you can then retouch it. Um, mm. And then I'll often bring out the, the specular highlights that I want with dodging and burning. So I'm not just taking away the shiny hot spots. Um, I I'm sometimes find that if people use hot shoe flash mm -hmm. with one one layer of diffuser that might also cause the problem because it's not double diffuse and how short flash it's not designed to to support with softbox in a sense sometimes yes. that might be the case I reckon. yes exactly and i really love the umbrella where the the light shoots into the umbrella and then the light is being bounced back rather than the um the, the light coming through just one as you said just one layer of diffusion you're yeah. going to have that kind of that hard spot, the, the diffusion isn't enough. By turning the light around, pointing it into the umbrella, the size of the light becomes a lot bigger and it's less concentrated in the middle and you don't have that hot spot. Yeah, exactly. Jeevan um, says, I have the AD300 Pro and confused about choosing Octobox size, so please guide. So the Octobox size, um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would go for um, it, it, it's really about convenience, to be honest, and the size of your studio. If you have a small studio, you don't want a 1.8 meter um, soft box that is simply too big to handle, and light is just going to be going everywhere because you, you're in a small space. The soft the soft box is close to the model. There's no control whatsoever. So if you're in a huge space and you're going to have your light way over way over there, and you're going to be shooting cars then go for it go for a, these huge um, huge soft boxes but I would experiment with some inexpensive uh, soft boxes don't but you know if, if you're gonna go and buy a an ex very expensive soft box then f experiment first with some more maybe more inexpensive ones and find out what suits you um, as I said, I'm, I've always found myself very comfortable with 120, but I also really like the, the 85. I find that I get very similar results, but it's smaller and neater. It's easier to carry around. I guess, in a sense, if they, uh, if they want a bigger softbox, like you said, with a reflective umbrella with a diffuser, mm -hmm. uh, Golox has recently published a few, they call it a pro range sort of reflective umbrella that might also work for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah works like a charm because um, i i took the umbrella to the um to the bandai last week for photo shoots 30 kilometers of wind I was like oh gosh <laughs> my right. assistant says oh my god how come this umbrella is still not broken yet it was like yeah it looks <laughs> like a charm fantastic yeah okay so um moving on to an example with um 
high speed sync. So this is an example of high speed sync because I'm shooting at a thousand thousandth of a second. I looked it up. I went to because people always ask me my settings and I'm like, oh, I can't remember. I can usually remember my aperture and that's it. Um, so if some, so I'm sure somebody's going to say. So this was two times eighty two hundreds. I had. It was a jet black, this was at the client premises, so I usually never use a jet black background. This was a pure black background that was provided for me, and I knew that because she had dark hair and I was going for a Hollywood look, I thought, oh, this is gonna be tricky. So I pointed the, the light onto the background just to lighten a little, a little bit so that I could have some, um, some separation and we could see the, the model. Um, and then I've got a beauty dish to get this Hollywood butterfly light. You can see it's quite hard, and I wanted to carve out her cheekbones. So I've got a beauty dish with a grid point, coming from above and pointing down in order to get that shadow underneath the underneath the nose, carve out these amazing cheekbones. Um, and I've got a reflector as well. You can can see in the catch lights you can see this little tiny dot that's just a small silver reflector as I was traveling light everything's got to be small just a small uh, reflector held right underneath to just provide that glow that's what she looks like she's glowing and it's the reflector that does that um, and it's filling in these shadows a little bit otherwise they would have been completely um, completely black um, but yeah I, I wanted I wanted that portrait look um, f 2.8 and so I just adjusted my, my my settings and I didn't even think so with high-speed sync you don't have to think about anything else somebody's probably asking why wasn't I ISO 100 probably because I was working fast and um, I had it set at ISO 200 and rather than than change my ISO which is just takes you know, a little bit more time away um, I just adjusted my shutter speed in, instead just to darken things down so it that's usually why if I'm working fast then um, I go with what I can because I mean this day I think we shot 12 models in one day so um, it was it was very fast paced and I didn't have time to, to mess around much um, red belly photography how much post work has been done on the stunning image thank you very much um, I do, let, I would say that I've done um, quite a lot, not, not too much. She had very good skin. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can enlarge this so we can take a closer look. That's smart. I never thought that we could done so this key light. Can you see, I don't know if you can see, I, I've, I've cleaned up her skin, but I haven't smoothed it. I don't know if you can see on the screen, but you can actually see all of the, the texture of the skin. Um, I had to, you know, I've, I, I cleaned up some veins on her, on, on her eyes. So here we're selling eyelash extensions. Um, that's the purpose of this image, and it's a, it's a Hollywood style. Uh, they call it the Kardashian effect. So I decided to go for this Hollywood look. Um, so I probably spent about an hour doing a high-end retouch on this because it's advertising. So it, it's not it. It needed a little bit of care. Um, I cleaned up the hair. The, any any stray hairs I cleaned up, um, but not a massive amount. I'd, I'd say yeah, probably about an hour in in all. But doing pixel level retouching. There's no filters or anything like that. Um, yeah. Out of, out of curiosity, uh, Sarah. Yes. Um, when would you choose to work with a softbox? When would you choose to work with a beauty dish? So when you work with beauty dish, is there any extra caution or co like you need to take comparing yes. with working with softbox? Yeah, well, a, a beauty dish is generally a lot harder. It's a harder, less forgiving light. So um, it's perfect. It's called a beauty dish because it's perfect for that um for typical beauty work but typical beauty work tends to be a model with perfect skin mm. who's 20 okay so i wouldn't use a beauty oh, stop right into the heart I'm yeah past age yeah it, i know 
lately. <laughs> well, you know, I wouldn't use a beauty dish if I was if I was going for that very soft, fine art look. I wouldn't use a beauty mm. dish if my aim was to flatter an older subject. Um, I, the beauty dish I tend to use if I want to carve out cheekbones and structure and I want to have, you know, really create some shape and have a lot of control on the image. So a beauty dish, especially with a grid, is really focused and controlled, but it is quite hard. But with a, you know, with a, with a young model with good skin and a reflector, it, it can be spectacular and it does give that classic beauty advertising look. Um, this is the same model. It's just uh, this is the one that the ch that the client chose. Um, as you can see, I've got a really wide open aperture, so that's the the beauty of high speed sync, and that you we can just use a little tiny pop of light and get the get the um, you know get the effect that you're get the, get the effect that we're looking for, no matter what the situation. Um, here as well. This is, oh, my computer is slowing down. While, my, while I've got the, the spinning circle of death, um, I'll answer a question. Um, red belly photography, it has a small light throw on the model as a softbox, can give you a great light throw over the whole body. Um, so I've actually, I have lit, um whole the whole model with a with a with a beauty dish no problem um i took take the grid off the grid really narrows the beam into a small circle so it's really only useful for, for this for this side but i have used i have lit the whole body with uh with the beauty dish it's just a question of angling it at the right direction um but if you really want if you're taking you know a, a doing a nude and you really want good light on the whole body then I would say I, I would probably use a long strip box. Um, Dang Tran, my girlfriend is a makeup artist and I often take photos for her work. Which modifier would you think is best for me to capture the most natural look to show the makeup? I've played with umbrella reflector and a large soft box. I've not tried beauty dish yet. I would definitely try a beauty dish and a reflector underneath so you're creating a clamshell look um, that's really going to carve out the cheekbones and it's going to it's going to really bring attention to, to the makeup if you want to flood the face with light try a triflector so i have a triflector which has one reflector here and then two on the side and it gives a distinctive three light so there's four light four light catch lights so there's the main light and then there's three little reflector lights underneath and it really just floods the face with light, with just one light, and you really show off the makeup because you really need a lot of light to, to show off the makeup. If you want to carve out the cheekbones and create a few more shadows, then take the side reflectors away. So that's my advice for that. Um, this, in this uh, image, we are selling a product for eyelashes that uh, increases, that makes eyelashes grow and it's, it actually, it's a perm for eyelashes, so it's like a treatment that fixes the eyelashes in place, dyes them, and then also helps them to grow. So what I wanted to do with this image was have everything else kind of melt away and just have the eyelashes really take center stage. So um, here's, I did a, a bigger version here. It should come into focus in a second. There we go. So there you can see that we've just got, you know, we can see how detailed that eyelash is and the eye and everything else, even the eyebrow is going out of, um, is going is, is going out of focus there. So here I was shooting an F2, 200th of a second, ISO 100, 180, 200 with a 120 uh, centimeter softbox and a silver reflector, which we can see clearly in the, uh, in the eyes here. Now, because, what I'll often do with beauty shots is <laughs> sharp. There's no sharpening yeah. on this image, by the way. <laughs> it looks rather sharp. Yeah, there's no sharpening on it. Um, and this was printed absolutely massive um, in in various forms. So um, yeah, it, it's 
that's my Sony. My Sony uh, is, is super sharp. It's not sharpened at all. In fact, I had to kind of soften the skin slightly because the skin was so sharp. Um, but what I will do with beauty images is that I'll sometimes bring the light um, down slightly. So with portraits, I tend to like the light quite high to create nice shadows on the face. With beauty, we want lots of light to kind of flood the face. So I just, I usually, I, well, I'll bring it down a little bit. Um, so that's why the, that you can see the, the softbox lower than usual. Um, there's a question, just looking at her eyes, what is the second light coming from? That's actually the reflector. So it's not a light at all. It's a silver reflector, small silver reflector. What but sort of size, he said? Just The size of the reflector? You know, people might be interested, that's all, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's like that. Mm. Cool. I, I'm not very... Got not very good with measurements. I don't know how. To. Yeah, nobody. I, I don't think anybody remembers uh, the size of the, you know, the exact size of the reflector. It's, you know, yeah, somewhere so, between sixty cm to one hundred twenty. That's usually yeah, the, it, It's a piece yeah, of range. It's a piece I steal from my triflector. So whenever I'm going around, I just take a piece. I just take one of the pieces off the triflector and I take that with me. And I just, it's one of those ones that just folds up. You know, you twist it around like a pretzel. Um, so moving on, the same, this, um, another, this is, this is actually, believe it or not, a beauty shot because we are selling eyelash treatments for men. Um, but I wanted a little bit of a, a, a grittier male look. So we need shadows for that. So I don't want him, you know, I've got, I need to change the lighting completely for a guy. Um, so what I did was just turn the light around and turn him so that I'm shooting into the shadows so it's short lit. There's more shadow going on because I want him to look gritty. I don't want him to look too girly. So I've just quickly, using exactly the same setup, I've just, um, I've just, you know, changed it up so that it's more suitable for a man. So my settings here were, I didn't want it to be quite so silky and melting away. So I've got, I'm at F5 now instead of F2, um, 640 of second, ISO 100. Um, and I do remember, I can tell that I've got some, I've got a little bit of overhead light here. So I'm using two AD 200s um, and I've got a gridded beauty dish at the front and I've a 120 centimeter softbox kind of providing that light that's just falling and you can see it's just hitting, hitting his hair. Um, so just in case people might be interested, what's the difference, like, you know, different approach you would take between take a photo for a guy and take a photo for a female? Yeah. So... The first thing we need to we need to remember is that guys tend to look good with when we can see the detail of their faces. So what I would try to do is make the opposite of what I would do to flatter an older lady, for example, like myself, um, where what I would try to do then is sort of flood the light with face as much as possible to sort of fill in all of the wrinkles and the crags and the and, and everything. Guys tend to look good with their crags and their wrinkles and their, you know, the, the details. So what I've done is if you if you make the light lateral, so coming from the side and and harder almost you're immediately making it more masculine um, and adding shadows is immediately making it more masculine. So rather than having him glowing, so um, I've taken away the reflector, for example. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is, is sort of add to the grittiness, add to the roughness, add, especially with a young boy like this, with perfect skin, angelic features. It's very, it would be very easy to make him look feminine. I don't want to make him look feminine. So shadows, harder light, um, you know, guys look good with, it's so unfair, guys look good with wrinkles and gray hair and, and you know, crag, cragginess. So um, yeah, that's mainly the, the, the thing that I'd be going for. And I, I find that more difficult. I'm much more, 
I'm much more comfortable shooting women because I know what to do to to to, to make them look soft and pretty and feminine and, and lovely. So, um, yeah. So that's I, I I would say the biggest takeaway when shooting men is shadows. Try to get nice, hard, deep shadows, and you're going to make them look manly. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So here I wanted to, so I'm shooting on the 70 to 200 here, which is why even F.6, the feathers um, that are behind her have, have, have gone out. It's, it's quite compressed. Um, again, I'm using um, high speed sync, 400 to the second. Um, and I'm using from memory, again, I'm using, um, I've got a light, on a very low power, just illuminating those feathers, and I've got a beauty dish sort of carving out these cheekbones. So I've pulled, I mean, I pulled up the ones that the client wanted and that the, 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 the client used. So this is, you know, all of this work is very much um, on client instruction, client direction. This is sort of my, I'm sure you've noticed that my, my own personal work is very different, but you need to be able to know what to give the client and, and what they want to do. So um, again, here I've just put the model in front of the softbox. And I've just got two lights, one in front, one behind. And I turned up, so here you can see I've got, this isn't a silver reflector. This is a white piece of polystyrene that I've got as a reflector. And it looks like an umbrella. So this is a classic beauty, beauty lighting setup. So just the, a, a small soft box or a beauty dish focusing the light on the face, a reflector to make the skin glow, and then the light behind for this bright white that's bleeding forward and coming forward onto the onto the jawline and the cheekbones. That's a really classic uh, beauty beauty setup. And then just some finishing. Gorgeous. Um, this was the same setup? Yeah, same setup, yeah. Mm. So this is, um, you know, this is one of those shots that we took as, you know, when we were mucking around and it ended up being the one that they used. <laughs> Great. So then um, on another job, I, you know, it tends to be because the client needs to get everything done in one day, you know, I need to turn up with my lighting equipment and get through a whole range of things in one day sometimes very very different things you know ranging from an impromptu product shot so this is what i haven't retouched this yet this is just um you know i've just found this on the white background and they were like oh can you take some product shots and i'm like yeah sure no problem <laughs> um so this was using the um ad300 uh giving me a little bit more power um, oh, I've forgotten to put the, the ISO because I was going to go into Lightroom and hunt for all the ISOs. So I, I haven't got the ISOs on these, but I'm pretty sure I was at 100 throughout. Um, maybe I might have gone up to, to 200 if I needed to. But uh, if you don't see the ISO numbers, it's because uh, I couldn't find it in the info section of the image and I, I needed to go and find the raw to get it. So this was F8, um, 125th of the second using the 8300 Pro. As I said, this is straight out of Lightroom. I haven't started retouching the products yet because um, it's uh, it's important to do that. So I, I need to tidy up all of the um, all of the stuff. But it's just to show that you need to be flexible when you're on a when you're on a, a job at the, the client premises, and it, sometimes you don't have all of your stuff, all of your you know tape you know product tables. If you're a product photographer, I'm not. Um, mm. So um, do you want to do you want to play the video, and then I can go through. Oh, the that'd be great. Uh, which one are we looking at? The, um, the, the light one. flashes? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The light flashes, right? Yeah. Sure. This one? Yeah. All right. Here we go.
So yeah, that was just showing so good. one day. <laughs> it's a lot to get through. <laughs> um, oh my God, how many images are you taking for within a day? Oh my God, um, I think so many. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, I'm delivering 30 finished images of the, oh. of the various. So yeah, finished meaning ready for publication. Yeah, so, you know, I can't, you can't be messing around with, with, lighting and you know it needs to needs to go 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 it's it's almost like i mean if you're a wedding photographer it's it's a piece of cake it's it's fine it's no problem at all but um there was there was a lot to get through that day we finished late but um yeah so i i just wanted to show that video showing a little bit behind the scenes and then i took a few showing my setup as well which i'm going to show you as i go through um before i do there's one that's off topic a little bit but i want to answer it red belly photography um do you shoot outdoors and if so do you go with this do you go with the sun and shadows on your model yes i do shoot outdoors because i shoot weddings so um and i will also sometimes occasionally shoot <laughs> portraits only if i'm forced to because because <laughs> mm. i prefer to i prefer to stay in the studio prefer to stay in the studio in the summer, it's so hot here in Italy that I, I really don't want to be shooting outside if I can help it. But um, for weddings, of course I do. So um, I tend to use the sun as the back, my backlight and I use a soft box on the subject. That's how I prefer to shoot, yeah. Or I will, if I'm shooting natural light, I'll search for places that have exactly the natural light that I want. So I'll never just, uh, that means avoiding just standing in open air with the sky above. That's generally the, the worst natural light to be, to be working with. Um, if I'm forced to do that, then I will definitely want to have a, a light with me because I can control the direction and the, and the, um, and the shaping of the light on the people. And then I'll blend it with the ambient light. So, um, the first, now I just wanna say as well that just showing how easy the the Godox is to use, I turned up for this job and I, it was the, I literally opened the, the umbrellas from the packet and, and assembled them right there and then. So, you know, it was just literally opening, opening, setting it up, going. It was as easy as that. It was absolutely great. So, um, I just quickly, as you can see, it's very chaotic. There's a lot of people around, but I've just stopped for a second and asked the videographer to stop so that I can explain what I'm doing. I don't even know what size umbrella I've got, which is, makes me laugh whenever I see this. So this is a really simple beauty setup. I've got my AD300 up here with a little softbox. Um, I'm not sure what measure, measurement that is. I'll check on that. Um, oh, it's the 65, yeah, 65. And just a simple reflector here. I've got the AD200 at the back there just to provide a little bit of ring light. And I'm using those, I'm using my trigger to just trigger uh, a, a random light that my client had because I just wanted a little bit of extra ring light on the other side. And here we go, let's see. So I just want to correct something there. I, I said that I was using my, my trigger to 
trigger a, a random light that the client had lying around. It wasn't my trigger. It was the lights that was triggering the other light. So I had I used that extra light that they had by firing my Godox using the Godox trigger, and then I was able to have a, another little bit of extra light from a from something 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 that they had. Um, so that was my setup. Not it's not not difficult at all, but we were going for something really a little bit crazy because what, what she's selling are colored, you can see her pink eyelashes, mm -hmm. she's selling um, colored eyelash extensions. So for anybody who doesn't know what an eyelash extension is, it's the, the eyelashes, false eyelashes that basically stay on for about a maybe three, two, three weeks, something like that. And it's their big business now. Everybody's wearing masks and they've got these amazing eyelashes. So, um, so yeah, this is her new product. And this is actually the, the, the boss. So the model is, is the boss. Um, she's the boss of the company, this, this big international company. And we, she wanted to have this, this, uh, this kind of unusual shot with lots and lots of color. So hopefully she's think, eyelash with color. Yeah, can you see the can you see the, the the pink on the eyelashes? Let me zoom in. If you can zoom in a bit, I I'm sure that will be easier for everyone. I can see the eyeshadows. Oh, sorry guys, just bear with me for a sec. I think um, sorry is probably rebooting her um her computer. Um, I'm sure she will be back uh, fairly quickly. Dramatic night, isn't it? So here we go. So it's back. Sorry. Great. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. Right on time. So Sarah, uh, Red Betty Photography is asking, how do you follow on your Instagram? Guys, if you look at Sarah's name, her Instagram handle is just right down there. Sarah Falala. Uh, photographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here you go for you. All right, let's continue. Um. So, uh, yeah. So pink eyelash, pink uh, eyelash extensions, and all different color eyelash extensions, and they do um, all kinds of crazy things, like the lower layer being green, and then the next layer being a different colors. I mean, it's it's just, there's a whole world out there of eyelash mm -hmm. extensions that we have no idea. So this was the this was the first one we wanted to play around with. I'm, um, I'm not sure about anybody else. I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know, right? This is confusing. <laughs> um, so that was the the first look that we went for that the boss uh, that the boss went for, and she loves it. So it was exactly what she had in mind. Uh, but hopefully, these behind the scenes um, things are just showing that it's really not complicated. It's very, very simple, and I tend to, you'll see again and again, the same clamshell light and reflector. And now, by the way, the 65 centimeter I absolutely loved because it's almost like a beauty dish. It's small enough that it's almost like a beauty dish, and there are inserts that come with it with, with reflectors that sort of give, mm. give that beauty dish effect. So I really, I really enjoyed using that. Um, Let's play the next one. So now we are using the AD200 because I, I don't need very much light. I've got a really, I've got a, uh, an aperture of 2.8. So I don't need that much light. I've got my AD300 charging for the next shoot. And we're creating a beautiful beauty shot with a reflector, lots of light because she's gonna have her hands, put your hands up, covering, we're gonna be creating this frame of her eyes so I need lots of light to be able to hit those eyes because we're selling eyelashes here. Hmm. So mm. that's the um, that's the end result. Um, so the AD three hundred Pro f two point eight two hundred per second ISO. I'm sure it was one hundred. Um, this is just a test shot that I took um, on the left. You can see the test shot without the light, so you can see there's just a tiny little bit of ambient. Um, but it just shows how with the with a 300, 300 watt second light you can get you know that's a lot of light i think people don't realize how, just how much light it is they think they need something super powerful whereas uh, depending on the settings you're using you um 
you don't always. Um, somebody, Sarah Wilson, for, unfortunately had to miss the first part. Is there any way we can watch this again? It's, it's going to stay on the, the Facebook page, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She can yep. uh, replay Sarah, it anytime she wants on YouTube yep. or Facebook. It's going to stay, it's going to stay up. Um, moving on. So we already saw some of these in the, in the next part. Again, you can see that I've got the light lower than I usually have it for portraits because this is beauty and I don't want too many shadows. Um, with portrait, I'm, I'm looking at much more playing with shadows. With beauty, we just want this kind of clean, glowing look. And then there's a close up. Oh, nice. So again, we're looking at the eyelashes and the, 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 the client had all these ideas about paint and then pink and roses and all just it's playing on the color theme of the fact that there's the, that they can have them in all different colors. Um, and these are these the images that the client's chosen as part of the part of what's going to be sold. So and then we did a few full length body shots because she wanted to do a few lifestyle shots as well to, for the social media showing you know, a sort of a certain carefree image, trying to highlight that the lashes provide freedom and, you know, not having to wear mascara or take it off. So this was one. So you can see it's easy to do a full body shot with... Um, Still clamshell lighting? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, I think I've got a reflector probably on the floor. Usually at this point, I just put the reflector on the floor and then that way any light that's falling on the floor is just automatically going to bounce bounce back up again so I suppose you could you know it's a very loose sense of clamshell lighting but um, someone said nice really shallow depth the field may I ask the lens I think for the most part here I've got a 50 uh, 50 my 50 on but for these I was using the 70 to 200 which I love because it just compresses I, I love to shoot really like from 100 up to 200 millimeters because it, it really compresses the face it's so flattering on on the face it does incre it does make the, the the depth of field really shallow so you've got to be careful with that but it's just it's so pretty it's so beautiful um this is another one ad 300 pro f4 125th um Nice clean shot. This is again. This is showing off a more natural, more natural lash. Again, a four point five. Mm. Just a, a a product, putting in the products. So this was fun because the client's idea was to have um, fairy lights inside the cotton wool providing the glow and I knew of course that using a flash would knock that out so I knew it wasn't going to work but we did try it so we can see this is this is the shot just using the ambient light trying to see if we could get the fairy lights to show up so if you want to you know just showing how much control and that we can create using an artificial light in a softbox um, I knew it wasn't going to work we tried it but I, I said okay let's just make it look like she's asleep on a cloud so we went with that instead and the all of the cotton wool is kind of acting as a reflector so that's what you can see nice there. and soft yeah yeah exactly mm. so i will just quickly address one question from the uh, red belly mm -hmm. he's asking godox has a play and taste day for senior ph photographers so due to the social distance rule in australia place in australia now i wouldn't um, have any bigger gathering for obvious reason, but uh, the showroom of Ko is still open, so you are more than welcome to come and come come along and try anytime you want. Um, Bavesh Karia said, "I had clients ask for fairy lights in the shot and have a glow from them, never be able to get it right to exactly." Now, another problem with this room was that there was loads of natural light coming in through coming in through these huge windows. So of course, you know, you need to have basically a, an, an almost dark room for fairy lights to just have that glow from fairy lights. Um, that's, that's why. And if you're gonna, if you're using flash, it's the flash is gonna knock out the fairy lights. So 
Um, if you do, if you do have clients ask for that, then you know in advance it's not it's not going to work. Mm. Um, another shot chosen from the same series. This is gorgeous angle for showing those. Yeah, I agree. yeah. So here, the, the you know the client, but, but at this point, I've got the client. We've worked together for quite a long time, so I know what she's looking for. At the same time, I'm being very careful. I don't know if you noticed, being very careful not to let the nose cross the um, the mouth. So we've got we're coming from two different angles. She's saying I need you to get higher because I want to see the eyelashes, and I'm like, eh, but I don't want the nose to cross the the the, the mouth. Otherwise, the nose is going to dominate the picture. So we're always trying to find that balance between my needs as the photographer trying to get a harmonious face and her needs as the as the client wanting to show off the lashes. Uh, love this talk. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it's not just you with the fairy lights. <laughs> um, same client wanted a really editorial look, carefree, trying to give a, the impression that, you know, hey, I just wake up like this because I have eyelash extensions so I don't have to put my makeup on. I just look like this when I wake up and I hang around the house in my sweater. So I'm shooting at F2, my favorite F2 um, at 320 per second ISO. It's gonna be 100, I'm positive, 100 or maximum 200. Um, and so we, yeah, going for an editorial look, and so I'm, I'm bringing in more shadows here. So this is just one light, and I'm letting, I'm kind of going to that sort of Rembrandt look, and um, and I'm trying to give variety as well to the client so that they're not all the same. First of all, we've got variety because she's got so many different ideas that we've had to put together in one day, but at the same time, um, at the same time, I want to give the client variety within each set, so. Uh, you wanted to see without the light, so this is a test shot done without light. And that's with. So I've got, here I've, I've returned more to my portrait style, which is a much higher angle and coming off more to one side so that you've got more of a, a more of a Rembrandt uh, look coming on. But it's very feathered so that the shadows aren't too, aren't too soft. Um, if you don't mind, would you just enlarge a bit so people can see the details about the Rembrandt lights you're referring to and the shadow yeah. side? Yeah. It's amazing nowadays with mirrorless camera how much details we look at the, the details yeah. of the sweater and the hair. It's like, yeah, right. And I don't sharpen crazy. it. I don't sharpen yeah. it. And this is an F2. Yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, I adore the sharpness and um, I definitely don't sharpen anything because there's, there's just no need. This is F2. I've left her hair messy. I haven't retouched that. I just retouched her skin a little bit, did a little, little bit of dodge and burn, and that's it. Uh, but the, with, what I'm talking about here is this sort of, this little triangle of light on the on the cheek is what we call the is what we call the Rembrandt lighting now I haven't retouched out see this little spot on her nose I love that what, we, what I call specular highlights uh, on her lips on her chin I really like that so I I keep that in and I actually emphasize it a little bit when I'm dodging and burning I like it looks like a, a little glow on the skin which I really like so we can go even bigger let's zoom in craziness yeah yeah so you can see then I mean, yeah, she was causing her foot to go out of focus but because I'm um, I'm a little way back and I'm using a 50 mm. millimeter um, we've got a lot more in focus than if I was using a longer lens mm. um, I then switch lenses to I think I went back to my 70 to 200 for this one to get a much or, or whoops, hang on, where's it gone? Sorry, a quick question. Which camera equipment do you use? I use Sony, Sony A7R3. Hmm. Works like a charm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Half I, one of those. I switched uh, maybe two years ago. 
maybe, yeah, maybe two years ago, something like that. So here I'm focusing on, now usually I would focus on the eye that is nearest the camera. However, uh, this is not the eye, this is not the eye, this is not the eyelash that the client wants to show off. It doesn't show the curve. So I've deliberately focused on this eye because this is what she wants to see. This curve of the eyelash is very important to them. So um, there's a reason for that. So usually portrait rules dictate that we would focus on the eye closest to us, but I've done this on purpose, just so everybody knows, in case somebody goes, you focused on the wrong eye. Um, again, here with the, we're trying to show off the product, but at the same time, I'm trying to stay within, I'm trying to create a pleasing, a pleasing image for, as a portrait photographer. Again, some more, um, these are all the same. Answer one question, Sarah. Yeah. It says, I, um, about uh, cropping. Photography. I've started relooking at old image that I didn't like and started to crop in tight and find that the image comes to life. Do you ever do this, Sarah? I don't. I tend to, I tend to crop in camera and in that I shoot what I, I try to get it as right in camera as I possibly can. But I definitely agree that if you look at old images, um, you might see things in a completely different way. That's a really interesting exercise. I might, I might try that. But generally speaking, I don't. I very, very, I'll never actually, rarely, never. I will never shoot wide with the intention of later cropping in. Um, if I want to get up close, and if I want to get up close, then I'll, I'll shoot close. If I want wide, I'll shoot wide. Um, have you found times when you would need a Godox 400 rather than the 300? Honestly, the way I shoot, no, because um, I, I, I'm able to, I'm quite happy, for example, to put up the ISO in order to just get more light and control the camera, control the lighting in a different way. Um, I do have 400s in my studio, um, but I find that the 300 is very, very flexible and more than enough. So, yeah. Lights are on our back, too. Sorry? It's lighter on, on our back in the back. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's, um, you know, and if you know if you know how to control the light with your camera as well, and how to, um, you, you know, how to balance the ambient, how to let in, how to make the, the light that you've got, how to allow more light to come into the camera sensor. It's really pretty flexible. Um, Nick, amazing work. Thank you so much. Loving the 300 Pro also. I'm interested in your process after the shoot. Client selection, how much did you edit images before the client sees them before their final selection? So if it's a portrait, it's a completely different procedure than if it's a client. If it's a client, I let them have full control. Not full control. I take that back. <laughs> I have full control. No, I will, do, I, will, I will do a quick selection in that I will eliminate anything that I don't feel comfortable being out there. So it, it could be that I, if I include everything, the client might choose something that I don't like for technical reasons. So if there's something that I'm not happy with for any kind of technical reason or other reason, I will eliminate it. I'll present the client with just um, adjusted in Lightroom. I'll just make sure that the color's good and the exposure is right because sometimes we all make mistakes. We, you know, sometimes don't get it right, or it'll look lighter on. Especially if you're working in a very, very fast-paced situation like this, it'll look fine on the back of your camera, and then you'll find it's a little bit darker. So I might bump it up a little bit. Usually, if I have the time in a portrait session, I'll be looking at the histogram. With something like this, that it was so fast and packed, and I was, you know, exhausted by the end of it. I didn't have time to be looking at the histogram and, and doing that. So um, every, pretty much everything was, was, is okay to go straight out of camera. That's fine. In fact, sometimes we will also look at um, the pictures together at the back of the camera, and I will star the, the images that the client wants already at, at the time of the shoot. But then I will send the client a gallery of, I don't know, maybe 200 images from a, a shoot like this, of a pre-selection and then she will make her final selection and then I will go on to retouch those. 
Um, with a portrait session, it's completely different. And I will produce finished images, retouched, and a very small selection. So I go by, um, that, uh, you know, I, I'm the one who knows what I'm doing. It's different if it's a, like a commercial client. They have needs and, and they have a right to have an input in that, um, in that, in that say. Um, Peter Rooney, hi, Peter. Uh, hey, Aries, Sarah, beautiful work as always. Back at you, mate. Awesome stuff. I always admire your work. Um, Sarah, what I'm loving about this talk, as you love being in control, but you are not egotistic and arrogant. That's such a huge quality. I hope to <laughs> you're very sweet. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am a control freak. I am, I am a control freak. That's why I work by myself with no assistance <laughs> and generally shoot weddings by myself. Um, that's very sweet. Um, I have the V862 and A200. I think the next one I might just jump to the AD1200. Oh, yes, that's the one I want next as well. Yeah, Great. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that so, comes actually very handy to, um, because you know, it's pretty heavy, but yeah. most of the heaviness is on the battery. The, the head is actually very light, very similar to AD300. So, with that power, you can do a lot with it no, yeah outside yeah. outside with the sun mm. i mean you can turn day day to night with that power right yeah exactly mm. so much fun yeah. um, i think you um, know rohi here is saying about the softness you know of your image you would love to learn more where wait, where is this how come beautiful images sarah how come your images lit so softly would love to learn more about that okay so the main thing you need to consider experimenting with is feathering. Um, it's, I wouldn't say that they're lit particularly softly. I mean, if you look at this one, you can see that the shadow is quite hard. You know, there's quite a hard shadow there. Um, mm -hmm. There's quite a small soft box. I think it was the 65 I had on there. Um, what What's happening though, is that I I tend to, I tend to feather the, the light on the model so that the, the the harshest part of the light, the central part, is missing the, the, the model and it's kind of going past the, the, mm. the subject, if that makes sense. So that the the feather, if you if you think of Photoshop, but you think of a take a Photoshop brush, okay? If you set the hardness level, you've got a hard edge. If you lower the hardness to zero, you've got the opacity in the center, and then it feathers out it gets softer and, and less opaque okay so if you think of the of the soft box as being like a photoshop brush on a very very high softness what you're doing is you're painting and and you have the the beam going past the model called feathering what you've got is the softest part of the light just kissing the face which is what gives that softness and of course i love to shoot at f2 and and Sometimes f one point four if I can, so that helps as well. I think you know with that kind of image, the particular style or you know workflow of your retouching actually need you know comes in the way to be consistent with the way you light, right? Mm -hmm. I I think Rahi, if you truly want to learn a bit more, um, go to visit Sarah's website. She does offer one-on-one -on -one online tutoring do you yes i do or, you know you, you if yeah. you want to talk about that that'd be great so every i i'm, I'm sure lots of people would be interested in your post-production sort of workflow mm -hmm. do you offer any uh you know coming up do you have any workshop coming up in europe do you have any you know online sort of teaching coming up yeah. i did i had a sold out workshop in germany uh was supposed to be uh, this weekend, but unfortunately, the the situation has uh, has forbidden that. So we, that's been postponed to April. But everything's happening online. So I do one to one mentoring, uh, and I have one client, for example, where we literally it's like I'm I'm there in the studio with her through the internet, mm -hmm. and we're looking at the light direction and. Um, uh, you know, we've, we've literally gone from zero to hero. So she's gone from not understanding how to use her lights at all to coming out with some really great 
straight out of the camera portrait images and knowing, understanding light. So we've done all of that online. Um, I also do retouching and editing. And uh, so, yeah, sure, contact me. No problem. I have a, a website yeah. called love edits.com. Do you, uh, um, sorry, do you, sorry, do you want to change your, um, your name to the, to the website or, you yeah. know, or you, you, do you want to message me the name? I can actually put it on yeah. the multiple I'll, I'll platforms of people. I'll send yeah, you a message. If you I, have, I have two. Cool. That'd be great. I have two. So I'm just messaging. I'm yeah, just, just send me both. Now. I will, um. One is for education and one is for my editing service. Yeah. Yeah. The great thing about um about you know even if we're locked down or you know we can't travel we can we can always learn and 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 do stuff together which is which is great. So I I also help people plan shoots so get their ideas together. We get mood boards. We do you know we plan creative stuff. But my aim is to help that person find their own creative ideas. Not 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 tell them what to do. I want them to find out for themselves and, and, and then we work on it together. So we work on creating the idea and then executing it. Um, so these are, I mean, this is commercial. So none of these are my ideas. Um, I keep that for my, keep that for my personal work, my creative work. Um, so here I'm shooting F2 again, that helps a lot with that kind of soft look that, that we were talking about, even though it's still super sharp. Um, let's see if we can, so these are going to be used for so probably because i'm at f2 that that product box is not oh it is it's not too bad actually um i was just saying that if for any reason that product box hadn't been razor sharp i would have replaced it with one that was because obviously the it all has to be the same but because it's on the same plane as the face even at f2 we've got things pretty sharp so I'm quite happy with that. Um, here I have another little video just showing the last setup. We are using... Sorry, uh, sorry. I um, actually didn't display the image. Would you just mind just go back yeah. uh, quickly so people can see the image? And even the image before that, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Just give me a couple of seconds. Sorry, Red Betty, I forgot to switch back to the um to the teaching sort of layout. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so um right. Um video. Okay. So this was, um, it wasn't the fight, it was, there were, I think there were five setups during the day, but this, this is the last one that I, that I recorded, that I remembered to get the videographer to, to record. We for me. are using the 8200 just on a lower power, I've got that on the 16th, just to put a little bit of fill, because I really want the light to just be bouncing everywhere here, all over the model to get a really, really luminous look. And then as our main light, we've got the 8300, and I'm using the 85, which has got a slightly shallower uh, soft box so that the light really spreads out. And I'm going to use a reflector as well. So let's go. Okay, and this is the, the result. Um, again, this is all, sorry. Sorry, just wondering how many lights we're looking at? Three lights, right? Three lights and one uh, reflector. Two, two lights and a, and a reflector just to bounce a little bit of fill back in. So I've got, um, okay. yeah. And you can see I've got um, the may, the key light is the AD, is the AD300 coming from up. I don't know, can you see my cursor moving? Uh, yes, top right. We, we do. It's, Oh, you can. Okay, great. Um, mm. It's coming from up here, and then I've got the AD two hundred sort of filling in from below on a really on quite low power. Um, and here, just let's we seeing as we're you know we're learning about eyelashes, let's go in and take a look at the eyelashes. So I don't know if you can see. This is the color. 
is where the color comes in. So there's like a, a green under layer of lashes and then black ones on top. Yeah. Beautiful. There we go. Um, so the hair is just amazing. Always oh, remember gosh. when you're lighting something that's or a subject that is lying down, and that goes for newborns, pets, boudoir, whatever. The light always needs the, the main light always needs to come down the face and the body. Always, never from up here. Sometimes when when the subject is lying down, people get confused and forget that it's it's a it's a rule that always needs to stay the shadows always see the shadows are still falling underneath her nose mm. and underneath her chin um otherwise the image we look at the image and it just looks wrong we just go whoa something's gone off here um and another like selection again we... sorry i said like that what well, it's, it's all strong. wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the wrong thing you're referring to. <laughs> no. I just thought to entertain somebody. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just taken from a different angle. The client wants to see the, I'll probably have to do some work on, on separating the hair away from the eyelashes to show that off. But that is it. Great. Um, yeah. So any more questions? No, I think we answered tons of questions, guys. If there's we any further question, now is the best time to um, to ask any question. We went through. Like to... We went through as we went along, which is good. Um, so, have you just moved and keep the light as they are? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Kept the light exactly where they were because no matter what direction I'm coming from the light still needs to be moving downwards. So you want, let's see. <laughs> People are screaming. I'm doing, I'm doing li live infographics here. It's coming down like that, okay? So I always want that to be going, you know, the, the, the shadow to be under the chin and under the nose, always, and under the cheekbones. So all I've done is I've just moved around from a different direction. Hmm. Totally yeah. off the board, it just clicked with me. I'm thinking of the ABBA lovely lady. Do you get that ever? Oh, what did I look like? <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you very much. Probably a straight hair. Oh, that was very funny. Oh, How long did the man. floor photo take to prepare the model? Not that long. It, well, what took time was doing the doing the curls, and then she just lay down, and maybe ten minutes just to arrange the the curls. I would have preferred. This was one of the last shots of the day. I would have preferred, honestly, to have spent more time cleaning up the hair um, because I'm looking. All I can see is stray hairs everywhere, driving me crazy. I would have loved to have spent more time cleaning, making everything really, really perfect, honestly. But um, yeah, we didn't have time for that. So, and then they just placed flowers everywhere. Really enjoyed that, thank you. You're very, very welcome. You're very, very welcome. All right, I think that's the last question. Amazing. Thank, thank you so everybody much. for being here with us, especially a huge thank to thank Sarah for this amazing work um, and be inspiration for everybody, including myself. And I, I hope everybody had a great time. So bye for now and um, I'll see you guys until next time. Thank you, Sarah. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for having me again. It's such an honor. Bye. See ya. Bye.